Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Build your online presence today with the link below in the description. What's up? This is John from John Best for Photography, and you all have been asking me for 50 years to go ahead and show you the Brenizer technique. So let's get into that today. If you're not familiar with the Brenizer technique, basically it's a panoramic photo that will let you use a telephoto lens, get your nice blurry background, but also get the look of a wide shot. Basically think taking an 85 and making it look like a 35, but with the attributes of an 85. You can see a couple of my photos I've done in the past here. I learned the Brenizer technique back in 2016 and it's something that I pull out at least once at every session. I absolutely love it and it's fun to do. But before you start taking the photos, you have to set up your camera correctly. So let's talk about the different parts you need to set up first before you actually start taking your Brenizer photos. Starting out with your focal length. You have to shoot on something long. So at least an 85 equivalent or longer. So for all of us Fujifilm fans, at least the 56 or something longer than that. Basically with this technique, what you're trying to do is get the blurry background of a long lens, but then take multiple photos that you can combine together to make a wider shot. So if you're not doing it with a long lens, it's kind of pointless. Today in this video, I'm gonna be making my Brenizer with the new 50 F1, which is killer for photos, especially at F1. If you haven't had a chance to check out my other videos on the 50 F1, definitely check them out up above. It is a great lens. Next up, you need to make sure you're on single point autofocus and not on continuous focus. Basically, this is a panoramic photo, but focused on your subject. So because of this, you don't want your focus to keep changing while you're taking photos of things on the left and on the right of your subject. And last but not least, make sure you set up back button focus on your camera. You need a way to be able to hold a button and keep your focus on for the first spot that you focused on. I have a video on how I like to set up my camera so that I'm able to do this. You also check it out up above. Mainly again, it's for Fujifilm cameras, but if you're on the Fujifilm system, it's definitely something you should check out. By doing this, you're able to use the back button focus, set your focus on your subject, and then hold it while you take continual photos around your subject as well. So again, shoot long, at least 85 or longer, autofocus, single point, and do not use continuous autofocus, and make sure you have your back button focus set up. So that's everything you need to do first. Let's go ahead and get into the actual shoot so you can see how it's done. I'm gonna have you all, let's hold each other chest to chest. So nice and tight. Yeah, exactly. So with this type of photo, basically what's happening is it's like a panoramic photo, except it's focused on you. So you're taking a long lens, which gives you blurry background, but taking multiple photos so you get a bigger, because normally with a wide lens, you don't get blurry background. With the tight lens, you don't get wide. So that's basically what it is. It's multiple photos and you put them together. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So the only caveat to this is I need you all to stay still for a moment. If you're smiling at each other, basically smile at each other and then I'll tell you to drop your faces, but don't move and then we'll keep going from there. There you go, that's perfect. Okay, so here we go. Y'all look at each other, don't move. Communication is key when pulling off these type of photos. You don't have to put in as much detail as I did, but make sure you explain to your couple what you're doing and that they won't be able to move while you're taking the photo. Also make sure to pick a nice easy pose that they're gonna be able to hold and not move so that the picture will come out. After you've taken all of your photos, then you merge it all in Lightroom to get your final image. We'll be covering that later in the video. So basically when you're making your Brenizers, one big thing to look for is depth. So I'm looking for foreground and background blur, which is why I'm kind of in a spot like this where there's stuff going on around me and also behind the couple. So I'm gonna have you all just hold hands facing me. Yep, and then yet again, I'll let you know when you don't have to hold your face, but for the most part, don't move. And then when I start my Brenizers, what I like to do is the first photo is our safety photo in case for some reason, the camera or the computer is not able to actually put it together. Here we go. So here's our safety shot. Auto focus on, on our back button. And then we count it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, more, one. Two. Here's our bottom. 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Here's some more over here on my left. Two, three, four. Two, three. Awesome. Before we get into our next couple of examples, let's make sure to give a shout out to this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an online platform that will help you build your website and online presence. If you're a creative like myself or just a business owner, Squarespace is a great place to start and build your business. And honestly too, a lot of people use them. I can't tell you how many Squarespace sites I see on the daily doing all kinds of different and awesome businesses. If you're looking to make a portfolio, Squarespace is a great place for that. With all of their templates and layouts, you'll be able to easily take your photos and load them in and make it look great. I've been using Squarespace now for six to seven years, and it's a great place to show off my portfolio to my potential couples. On top of being able to show off your portfolio, you have other features as well like commerce, analytics, and so much more. With commerce, I'm able to sell things like my preset or even physical products like prints. And analytics will help me see who's coming to my site and also how much I'm making from all of my sales. And if you're a creator like myself, you can even do things like newsletters and build your own email list. So seriously, Squarespace is awesome and it's something you should definitely check out. Make sure to check the link in the description for 10% off of your first website or domain. Again, thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So this time we're gonna do a vertical burnizer. It's pretty much the same thing except you don't have to take as many photos. So here we go, y'all stay like that. Here's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We're gonna come up some. One, two, three, Four. One, two, three. Make sure you're not rushing when you take your burnizers either. If you move too quickly, you're gonna introduce motion blur into your photos. You need everything to be sharp. Also make sure you're shooting everything in manual. Using a mode like Aperture Priority is gonna be hard because the settings are gonna change and then when you go to combine your photos, it's just not gonna work out too well. So shoot in Kelvin and shoot in manual. Now that we've looked at how to shoot the photo, let's go ahead and look at how you combine the photos in Lightroom. So I've gone ahead and imported all of my photos into Lightroom. I'm gonna be using Lightroom Classic for this example, but keep in mind you can do this in Lightroom CC on the computer as well. So as usual, you see the first shot here is my safety shot. What you wanna do is select that photo and then select all of your other shots that you're gonna need. So I'm gonna hold shift and select all the photos. You can see I already combined it here, but we're gonna do it again. And now since I was shooting on the higher shutter speed, I have doubles of all the photos. So what I'm gonna go through is deselect all the photos that look basically like a double because I don't need that many and all it's gonna do is confuse Lightroom more. Generally, if you're not shooting so many photos, you should not have this problem. This is literally a me issue. <laughs> now that I've selected all the photos I need, I'm gonna right click, go to Photo Merge, and panorama. Now, when you're looking at your panorama window, you have different ways that you can merge your panorama. You have spherical, cylindrical, and perspective. And this is really gonna depend on the photo. I find if I have a lot of geometric shapes, perspective helps. Also, if you do spherical and you're seeing more of a fisheye look, you might wanna try perspective as well. But most of the time, spherical is just fine. So my computer has gone ahead and merged everything and it looks pretty good to me. Keep in mind how long it's gonna take depends on your computer. I have a pretty fast one, so it was able to merge all those photos pretty quickly. So you can see here, I have 24 images, all successfully merged. And if I like the way it looks, I can go ahead and hit merge. 
All of that extra space left over, I will be cropping out later on. After you've merged your photos, you should see the photo show up somewhere at the bottom of all the images that you've selected. So here's the one I merged. And as you see, there's some just blank space in the photo. So usually what I'll do is go in and develop and start out by cropping the photo. So I'm gonna use my crop tool. And a lot of times because these photos are just so big, I like to 16 by nine it, but you can crop it however you want to because now you're dealing with 24 photos, which makes the photo super huge. But I'm just gonna select 16 by nine and then I'll crop it inside of all the white space. And there's my photo. Once I've gotten to this stage, I'll go ahead and start editing the photo. And that's how I get to my final look of my Brenizer. Awesome. So that was the Brenizer technique a new little tool that you can add to your belt of cool things you can do at your photo sessions. What do you think about the Brenizer technique? Is it something that you would see yourself doing? Let me know in the comments below what you think about it, if it's pointless, if it's cool, just let me know. I'm curious what other people think. Like I said again, I do it at least once at every session that I do. Again, thank you for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed this information. And don't forget to hit the like if you enjoyed this information and subscribe for more Fujifilm photography, and creative entrepreneurship information. I'll catch you all next time. All right, peace.